I know y'all look at the title and be like, come on, bro. But I'm not writing it off that quick. A missing plane from 1955 landed after 37 years. I'm thinking maybe UFO, extraterrestrial, something like that. Let's check the video out. Throughout history, there are several aviation mysteries that remain unexplained to this day. These cases are not merely puzzles and inquiries for conspiracy theorists and experts. They have real consequences for individuals and their families. Let's unravel the tragic stories of these aviation accidents one by one. From unexplained plane mysteries to bizarre aircraft sightings, here are the 20 world's biggest aviation mysteries. Number 20. The Disappearance of Malaysia Airlines Flight MH370 On March 8, 2014, nine years and six months ago, Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 disappeared from the radar while flying from Kuala Lumpur International Airport in its home country Malaysia to its destination, Beijing Capital International Airport in China. Today, this plane's disappearance remains the most intriguing aviation mystery. Yes. For some unknown reason, MH370 and the 239 people on board vanished without a trace. Naturally, international search and rescue launched immediately. Ships and aircraft from multiple countries scoured vast expanses of the Indian Ocean. And yet, despite exhaustive searches, only a few pieces of wreckage, such as a wing flap and some debris, washed ashore. The main wreckage and the majority of the passengers and crew remain missing to this day. Now, what's stranger... You know, another thing I think about with this story right here is that there was no miracle survivor. Normally in these situations, maybe one or a few people found a way to survive, hold on until help got there. Not one person. That's what has me looking at this thing sideways. We didn't even get a miracle survivor. Is the fact that even experts are perplexed about the plane's disappearance. Some theorize that a technical malfunction was most likely to blame for the plane's sudden disappearance. However, whether it's foul play or something completely accidental is unknown. One of the most perplexing details about MH370's disappearance was the deliberate shutdown of the aircraft's communication systems. The transponder, which provides location data, and the aircraft communications addressing and reporting system were manually turned off, suggesting that someone on board deliberately turned it off. Despite extensive satellite data analysis, there is no consensus on the plane's final location. Multiple countries joined forces throughout the years, and yet, this mystery remains unsolved. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now. Number 19. The Disappearance of Flight 19 On the 5th of December 1945, five torpedo bombers disappeared over the Bermuda Triangle. Initially, Flight 19 embarked on a routine navigation and combat training exercise called Navigation Problem Number 1. The torpedo bombers were meant to do bombing and navigation exercises along with other flights. And yet, it seemed like Flight 19 alone fell into trouble. As the torpedo bombers passed over the infamous Bermuda Triangle, a region that the majority of us recognize for its history of unexplained disappearances, the torpedo bombers began experiencing problems. The first sign of trouble was the loss of radio contact between Flight 19 and the control tower. The flight leader, Lieutenant Charles Taylor reported compass malfunctions, making it impossible for them to determine their position. In a series of desperate radio transmissions, Taylor and his 12 crew members communicated their disorientation and distress. They couldn't identify any landmarks or vessels below, and their situation grew increasingly dire. Despite repeated attempts by the Navy to guide them back to base, Flight 19 continued to drift further into the vast expanse of the Atlantic Ocean. What's more, the worsening weather made their predicament more complicated. The last message from Taylor was received around 6.20 in the evening that day. However, some reports also claim it was around 7.04. Nevertheless, Taylor's right. final message was allegedly a hopeless statement. All planes close up tight. We have to ditch unless landfall. When the first plane drops below 10 gallons, we all go down together. And so, to this day, Flight 19's fate remains shrouded in mystery. Number 18. The Deadly Crash of Aero Air Flight 1285R Aero Air Flight 1285R was an international charter flight that flew in 1985. Today, it's recognized as one of the deadliest aviation accidents throughout the history of mankind. Not only that, 
but it's also one of the most perplexing cases. Aero Air Flight 1285R was a chartered DC-8 aircraft transporting 248 U.S. military personnel from Cairo, Egypt to their final destination in Fort Campbell, Kentucky. The flight, a part of Operation Bright Star, held the promise of a safe return for these servicemen and women. But well, it never happened. As the aircraft prepared for takeoff at Gander International Airport in Newfoundland, Canada, everything appeared ordinary. However, shortly after launch, the incident happened. On December 12, 1985, the aircraft crashed into a wooded area near the airport. The catastrophic impact resulted in the loss of all 256 people on board, Jeez. including the crew and passengers. The immediate aftermath of the crash triggered intensive investigations. While initial reports pointed to icing on the wings as a possible cause, this theory was met with skepticism by some experts. Over the years, various theories have emerged, ranging from mechanical failures to sabotage. The controversy surrounding Flight 1285R continues to generate debate among aviation experts to this day. Number 17. Tell this is not helping my fear of flying at all, bro. <laughs> Every time I feel like I make a step forward, we watch something and I take 10 steps backwards, fam. Just letting y'all know. The beginning of the Flying Tiger Line incidents. In 1962, a series of accidents occurred in aircraft care of the Flying Tiger Line. Also known as the Flying Tigers, it was the first scheduled cargo airline in the United States, and it was also a major military charter operator during the Cold War. The series of incidents of Flying Tiger in 1962 began with Flight 739, on March 16, 1962, after departing from Guam and reaching cruising altitude, Flight 739 made its last radio transmission. The aircraft, a Lockheed L-1049H Super Constellation, seemingly vanished over the vast expanse of the Western Pacific Ocean. Shortly after the incident, the U.S. military and naval vessels along with aircraft scoured the area, covering thousands of square miles in the hopes of finding any sign of Flight 739. Despite these efforts, no wreckage, debris, or any indication of these aircraft's fate was ever seen. It's as if the plane and its 107 occupants had simply vanished into thin air. The disappearance of Flight 739 sparked numerous theories and speculations. Some believe the Flying Tiger Line's flight's connections with the military attracted foul play. A Liberian tanker, the SSTL Linzen claimed that they saw a bright light near the aircraft's supposed position 90 minutes after the last radio contact, further supporting claims of foul play. However, no conclusion is accepted to this day. Number 16. The second incident of Flying Tiger Line in 62. Flying Tiger Line Flight 282 was a cargo flight en route from San Francisco International Airport to John F. Kennedy International Airport in New York City. Flying Tiger Line Flight 282 was on a mission to carry military personnel and cargo during the holiday season. It sounds like it wasn't a fight that would attract malicious intent, yet it got involved in a tragic accident. Sadly, soon after takeoff, the Lockheed Super Constellation faced difficulties gaining altitude and maintaining stable flight. The flight crew, including pilot Jabez A. Richards, co-pilot Daniel W. Hennessy, and flight engineer Paul M. Entz made valiant efforts to regain control of the aircraft, but their attempts were in vain. The aircraft that was supposed to deliver joy crashed on Christmas Eve. Subsequent investigations aimed to uncover the cause of the tragedy. While the exact cause remains debatable, the loss of Flight 282 left families and loved ones ruined and separated that Christmas season. Number 15. Why is there no escape method built into these planes it's like uh oh something's wrong we got a malfunction we got to figure this out because we don't that's it that's the only option we got is figuring this out like why is that the only option and like fighter jets or different things don't they have to be able to eject out parachute everything why is there not something that can happen that gives us another opportunity to try to survive this thing Amelia Earhart's Disappearance There is no doubt that the disappearance of Amelia Earhart is the most renowned and most mysterious yes. case in the history of aviation. Amelia Earhart was a pioneering aviator. In her lifetime, she achieved numerous feats in her career, but she wanted to accomplish an unheard feat, circumnavigating the globe. And so on June 1, 1937, 
Amelia Earhart and her navigator, Fred Noonan, departed from Miami, Florida in their Lockheed Model 10 Electra aircraft. Their goal was to circumnavigate the globe, covering 29,000 miles across the Pacific, Asia, and the Americas. The world watched as Earhart and Noonan completed multiple legs of their journey successfully. However, as they neared the Pacific Ocean's remote region known as the Howland Island vicinity, they were met with an unprecedented accident. In her last radio transmission, Amelia Earhart reported difficulty finding Howland Island. Other communications surfaced, but some were reportedly nothing but hoaxes. Shortly after Amelia's last contact, the U.S. Coast Guard and other forces joined to locate Amelia and Fred. And yet, to this day, there is no apparent explanation behind the duo's mysterious disappearance. Over the decades, numerous theories have emerged regarding Earhart's disappearance, ranging from fuel exhaustion to landing on a remote island. Some believe that Amelia and Fred's plane ran out of fuel while searching for Howland Island. With this, the aircraft fell into the ocean and the two subsequently perished. However, some argue that the plane's extra fuel would have been enough to reach the island. There is also the theory that Amelia and Fred somehow found their way to Gardner Island. Interestingly, there were claims that the island showed signs of being inhabited, and a skeleton that possibly belonged to a woman was found. Unfortunately, subsequent analysis refuted any connection to Amelia. Meanwhile, others believe that the two accidentally flew within the Japanese South Sea Mandate, leading them to be captured by Japanese forces. There are also less likely theories, with some bordering on fiction. And perhaps, the most unlikely is the theory that Amelia somehow assumed a new identity and left behind her famous persona. These are only some of the theories surrounding her disappearance. So if you know of any other theories, no matter how likely they are to happen, feel free to share them down below. After all, can you imagine you flying around the world, something going wrong, and now you got to navigate your way down and try to survive what may look like a plane crash? And let's just say you do survive it, but you land on this island. And now you're thinking, OK, now I just got to figure out a way to get help. And you get yourself onto this island and then you realize that there's tribes on this island and they're not really welcome to humans. Uh, they're not really welcome to outsiders. Let's say that because they could be humans themselves. They're not really welcoming the outsiders. And now this is a whole nother thing you've got. Imagine her landing somewhere near Sentinelese. We've got no choice but to speculate, right? Number 14. The Mystery of the Star Tiger. The Star Tiger was an Avro Tudor IV aircraft owned by British South American Airways. On January 30, 1948, this aircraft vanished into thin air over the vast Atlantic Ocean during a fateful flight from Santa Maria and the Azores to Bermuda. The disappearance of Star Tiger, along with that of another BSAA Avro Tudor, Star Ariel, in 1949, remains a puzzle to this day and has played a role in shaping the legend of the Bermuda Triangle. The flight allegedly faced unfavorable weather conditions and strong winds, leading to the loss of communication with the aircraft. In response, U.S. Air Force personnel at the airfield swiftly organized a five-day rescue operation, even as weather conditions deteriorated. They deployed 26 aircraft for a total of 882 hours, and surface craft also joined in the search efforts. Regrettably, despite these extensive efforts, no trace of Star Tiger, its 31 passengers or crew were ever found. The cause of the disappearance remains a mystery, with theories ranging from navigational errors to adverse weather conditions. One notable discrepancy was that Star Tiger's reported cruising altitude was consistently listed at 20,000 feet, even though the planned altitude was 2,000 feet. This suggests the crew may have forgotten their actual altitude, possibly leading to the aircraft descending into the sea. The fate of Star Tiger, like that of its sister aircraft Star Ariel, remains unsolved. Number 13. The Enduring Mystery of the Ghost Ship In the early hours of April 16, 1942, a U.S. Navy K-Class blimp designated L-8 embarked on a routine anti-submarine patrol mission along the California coastline. The blimps, or K-blimps, were essential in scouting for enemy submarines prowling the Pacific Ocean. As the blimp floated along its patrol route, something extraordinary occurred. The crew of two experienced aeronauts, Lieutenant Ernest DeWitt Cody and Ensign Charles E. Adams, mysteriously vanished without a trace. The blimp, 
now eerily unmanned, continued to drift southward, attracting the attention of bewildered onlookers below. Reports of the wayward blimp began to flood in, raising concerns about its cargo of live depth charges, which could detonate on impact. Over the course of several hours, the ghostly blimp drifted inland, navigating a seemingly aimless path. Multiple attempts were made to establish radio contact with the vanished crew, but all efforts were met with silence. The bizarre journey of the ghost blimp came to a somewhat anticlimactic end when it gently descended over Daly City, California, striking some power lines before coming to rest in a residential neighborhood. Remarkably, the depth charges remain unarmed, sparing the area from potential catastrophe. What transpired aboard the L-8 blimp during those hours of mysterious absence remains a subject of speculation and intrigue. The experienced crew's inexplicable disappearance and the blimp's unpredictable flight have fueled numerous theories. Some have proposed that the crew may have fallen victim to a gas leak or a mechanical malfunction, leading to the incapacitation. Others suggest espionage or enemy action, although no concrete evidence has emerged to support these claims. Number 12. The Tragic Incident of Egypt Air Flight 990 The ill-fated flight of Egypt Air Flight 990 took place on October 31, 1999. It was a scheduled international flight from Los Angeles International Airport in the United States to Cairo International Airport in Egypt, with a planned stopover at John F. Kennedy International Airport in New York City, with the aircraft assigned to this journey being a Boeing 767-366ER. However, Tragedy struck when Flight 990, after reaching its cruising altitude over the Atlantic Ocean, suddenly entered a steep descent and crashed into the waters of Nantucket Island, Massachusetts. The aircraft disintegrated upon impact, resulting in the loss of all 217 people on board, including passengers and crew. The crash of Egypt Air Flight 990 sparked immediate investigation and intense speculation. Initial findings suggested no that the aircraft's co-pilot, Gamil al Batudi had deliberately caused the crash, as indicated by the cockpit voice recorder. al Batudi repeatedly said, I rely on God, before manually disconnecting the autopilot and pushing the plane into a dive. The investigation into the crash was complicated by the conflicting accounts of the pilot's actions and disputes between Egyptian and American authorities. Egyptian officials disputed the notion of a deliberate act while U.S. investigators leaned toward the theory of the pilot deliberately sending everyone to their demise. Despite extensive investigations and analysis, no definitive conclusion was reached as to the exact cause of the crash to this day. Number 11. That's another thing, man. I gotta put my life in this. And I know everybody gonna be like, yeah, well, you do it on other vehicles. If you get in an Uber, you're putting your life in someone's hands. True, true. If you do something, true. But it just, I don't know why it just stands out so much for me for airplane. Maybe it's because it's up so high and it just being at those altitudes, you just think, man, you don't have too many options. At least on the ground in an Uber, I can try to, you know what I mean? Fight my way up out of it. But on a craft? The 2006 Chicago O'Hare UFO incident. This incident is among the most befuddling UFO sightings to date. O'Hare International Airport, one of the busiest airports in the United States, serves as a major transportation hub, connecting passengers from around the world. On November 7, 2006, something unexpected happened in the bustling airport. On that day, several United Airlines employees and witnesses on the ground reported a bizarre sight. A disc-shaped object hovering over gate C-17 at the airport's Terminal 1 just below the cloud cover. The sighting occurred during daylight hours, and witnesses described the object as silver and metallic. The unidentified flying object was seen by multiple witnesses, including airline personnel, pilots, and mechanics, who observed it for several minutes. It was a sight that defied conventional explanation. According to witnesses, the object shot upward at incredible speed, leaving no visible trace behind, which made the unknown flying object more intriguing. The Federal Aviation Administration, or the FAA, initially downplayed the event, suggesting that it was Always. likely a weather phenomenon such as a hole-punch cloud, caused by an aircraft's passage through a supercooled cloud layer. Investigations into the O'Hare UFO sighting continued, and some experts expressed skepticism about the weather-related explanation. 
Witnesses stood by their accounts, asserting that the object they saw was unlike any conventional aircraft or natural occurrence. But to this day, the classification of the flying object remains unknown. Number 10. The Valentich Disappearance On the evening of October 21, 1978, a Cessna 182L aircraft piloted by Frederick Valentich, a young and aspiring pilot, took off from Moorabbin Airport in Melbourne, Australia. Valentich's flight was going smoothly. It was just another training mission that would take him over the waters of Bass Strait. As Valentich flew over the tranquil waters, he made a series of radio transmissions to air traffic control, reporting a strange and unsettling encounter. He described an unidentified aircraft flying close to his Cessna, hovering and maneuvering in a manner that defied explanation. Valentich's description of the mysterious aircraft was intriguingly eerie. He noted that it had a shiny metal surface, appeared to be not an aircraft, and was traveling at high speed. The young pilot expressed concern and unease about the situation, leading air traffic control to dispatch search and rescue efforts. The radio communication took a chilling turn as Valentich reported that the unidentified aircraft was now hovering directly above him. Moments later, a metallic scraping noise was heard, followed by a brief radio silence. Valentich's final words were, it's hovering, and it's not an aircraft. Quite eerie, isn't it? To this day, what Valentich saw remains unknown. No more information was gathered as all contact with Frederick Valentich and his aircraft was cut after the cryptic transmission. Search and rescue efforts combed the waters of Bass Strait, but no trace of the pilot or his aircraft was ever found. Number 9. The 1955 Thomas Mantell UFO Incident On January 7, 1955, in the small town of Fort Knox, Kentucky, Air National Guard pilot Thomas Mantell took to the skies on a usual training flight in his F-51 Mustang fighter plane. Little did he know that this mission would lead to an encounter that would baffle experts for decades. While in flight, Mantell and his fellow pilots received a radio transmission describing an unusual object in the sky. Witnesses on the don't ground... That sound, don't that sound familiar? The Tic Tac object? If you don't know what the Tic Tac object is, do your research and look that up. Yeah, that sounds similar to this situation so far. ...including police officers reported seeing a large metallic and disc-shaped object with a red light hovering in the vicinity. Intrigued and determined to identify the object, Mantell and his fellow pilots pursued the unidentified flying craft. Mantell's F-51 Mustang climbed to higher altitudes, eventually reaching an estimated 22,500 feet in pursuit of the elusive object. Tragically, as Mantell continued his ascent, he reported seeing the object up close, describing it as metallic and of tremendous size. However, shortly after, his aircraft went into a steep climb, followed by a rapid descent and crash. Mantell's plane was found scattered across a field, and he did not survive the crash. The incident prompted official investigations by both the military and civilian authorities. The initial military report suggested that Mantell had been chasing a skyhook balloon, which was part of a top-secret project to monitor Soviet nuclear tests. However, this explanation was met with skepticism balloon. by many. Some believed the explanation of a skyhook balloon, while some were convinced that Mantell really saw an extraterrestrial craft that day. I do. Number I eight. I think he did. Lady Be Good. If you're a history buff, perhaps you know about the Lady Be Good mystery of 1943. On April 4, 1943, the Lady Be Good took off from Saluk Airfield in Libya as part of a bombing raid over Naples, Italy. Tragically, the Lady Be Good failed to return from the mission, leaving its fate shrouded in uncertainty. The crew's absence triggered search and rescue operations, but no wreckage or survivors were found. It wasn't until more than a decade later in 1958 that the Lady Be Good's fate was partially revealed. An oil exploration team discovered the crash site in the Libyan desert, more than 400 miles south of Saluk Airfield. They found the perfectly preserved B-24 bomber, but its crew's whereabouts remain unknown. Number 7. Air France Flight 447 On the night of May 31, 2009, Air France Flight 447, a state-of-the-art Airbus A330, departed from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, en route to Paris, France. There were 228 passengers and crew on board. As the flight flew over the equatorial Atlantic Ocean, the flight encountered turbulence and severe weather. The region is already known for thunderstorms, and while most aircraft make it through, 
Flight 447 didn't. In the early hours of June 1, 2009, Flight 447 suddenly disappeared from radar screens and ceased all communication. It wasn't until 50 days after the disappearance that the wreckage and debris from Flight 447 were finally discovered floating on the ocean surface. This grim discovery confirmed the worst fears. The aircraft had crashed into the ocean. The investigation revealed a chain of events that contributed to the crash. It began with the malfunction of the aircraft's pilot tubes, devices that measure airspeed. The incorrect airspeed data led to confusion in the cockpit and the activation of stall warnings. Despite their efforts to keep the plane in the air, it crashed into the water, leading to the demise of people on board. Number 6. The Crash of Canadian Pacific Airlines Flight 3505 The crash of Canadian Pacific Airlines Flight 3505 in 1951 remains an enduring aviation mystery. On July 21, 1951, a Douglas DC-4 aircraft with the registration CFCPC operated by Canadian Pacific Airlines embarked on a scheduled flight from Vancouver, Canada to Tokyo, Japan. This flight, which was part of the United Nations mission, was meant to include a stopover at Anchorage Airport in Alaska. The flight commenced as scheduled, and the aircraft reported its position at the Cape Spencer intersection in British Columbia, approximately 90 minutes from Anchorage. However, the weather conditions in the area were challenging, with heavy rain and icing reducing visibility to a mere 500 feet. After this report, all communication with the aircraft abruptly ceased. Search and rescue operations were launched to locate the flight, but each mission was unsuccessful. On October 31, that very same year, the search was called off, and the fate of Flight 30... Question. Because every time you hear something go down by the weather, it's been... This question has been popping, my head, popping in my head. You know they say that we have the ability, quote-unquote conspiracy theories, that we have the ability to control the weather. We've all heard what Dubai is doing and different things like that. How far do you think that dates back? Light bulb just went off in your head too, huh? How far do you think that goes back? Do you think some of these airplane crashes and different things that have happened throughout the year have been orchestrated because some people can control the weather? So it's kind of like throwing a rock and hiding your hand you never see who, who did it because they can just do something with the weather and make that plane go down. Just a thought, something I was thinking about. 505 remains a mystery. Number 5. 2007 Alderney UFO Sighting It was April 23, 2007, when the residents of Alderney, one of the Channel Islands, were treated to an unusual spectacle. As dust settled over the island, a mysterious object appeared in the sky, defying any explanation. Numerous eyewitnesses, including pilots and air traffic controllers, reported seeing a large, bright, silent object hovering above the island. The sighting was particularly significant due to the involvement of airport staff. Employees at the Alderney Airport, responsible for air traffic control, also spotted the enigmatic object, which led many to believe that the claims were credible. However, whether the staff saw an alien aircraft or just an ordinary one remains debated to this day. Number 4. Indian Air Force AN-32 On July 22, 2016, an Indian Air Force AN-32 transport plane took off from Tambaran Air Force Station near Chennai, India. Its destination was Port Blair in the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. The flight was routine, with 29 people on board, including six crew members. Nothing was unusual until the aircraft proceeded over the Bay of Bengal and suddenly vanished from radar screens and navigation systems. What followed was an extensive and prolonged search and rescue operation, one of the largest in India's history. The Indian Navy, Coast Guard, and other agencies joined forces to scour the Bay of Bengal and surrounding areas for any sign of the missing AN-32. But despite extensive efforts, no wreckage, debris, or clues about the aircraft's location were ever found. It's Number 3. Odd. Odd. Air Lingus Flight 712 On March 24, 1968, Aer Lingus Flight 712, a Vickers Viscount turboprop aircraft departed from Cork Airport in Ireland on a flight bound for London's Heathrow Airport. The flight began as any other, with passengers settling into their seats and the aircraft ascending into the sky. The route was a familiar one, but perhaps, if death is upon people, they really can't escape it. 
Over the Irish Sea, near Tusker Rock, a loud explosion rocked the aircraft. Alarmed passengers and crew members were thrust into a chaotic and perilous situation. The explosion had torn through the aircraft, causing it to break apart. The explosion triggered an urgent search and rescue operation, with vessels and aircraft scouring the turbulent waters of the Irish Sea. Tragically, all 61 people on board, including passengers and crew, lost their lives in the disaster. The exact reason for the accident remains unknown. Number 2. Manesis UFO Incident On November 11, 1979, above Manesis, Spain, a routine commercial flight faced what is now considered a UFO encounter by many. On that day, Flight JK-297, with Captain Francisco Javier Lerdo de Tejeda at the helm, noticed rapidly approaching red lights. To ensure everything was clear, the crew contacted military radar and Barcelona's flight control, but found no explanations. In fear of a potential collision, Captain Tejeda made an emergency landing at Manisas Airport. It was then that the radar in the area detected three more UFOs witnessed on the ground. A Mirage F-1 fighter pilot, piloted by Captain Fernando Camara, attempted interception, but encountered jammed avionics. To this day, whether aliens were the culprit or humans remains unknown. And now it's time for today's topic. A missing plane from 1955 landed after 37 years. Here's what happened. The Pan American flight story began on July 2, 1955, when Pan Am dispatched Flight 914. The aircraft, a Douglas DC-4, was scheduled to fly from Idlewild Airport in New York City, now known as JFK International Airport, to Miami, Florida. But while in the air, something bizarre happened. The flight disappeared from radar screens and air traffic control communication. It was as if the aircraft had vanished into thin air. The aircraft allegedly disappeared for 37 long years until it reappeared again and landed as if nothing happened. What's strange is that everyone on board got off the plane as if they hadn't aged over the past 37 years. However, many believe this is a hoax and dramatized to mold the story of an actual aviation incident. Meanwhile, others argue that the government is concealing this bizarre phenomena. To this day, only speculations circulate on the internet. I'll leave it to you to be the judge. Number 1. 1956 B-47 Disappearance Amid the Cold War, a puzzling event unfolded. The 1956 B-47 Disappearance. This would be the final incident I'll tell you about. On March 10, 1956, a Boeing B-47 Stratajet, part of the U.S. Air Force's nuclear strategy, departed from Florida's MacDill Air Force Base for a routine training mission. During the mission, one B-47, call sign Overex, vanished from radar and radio contact, perplexing authorities. A massive search ensued, but no wreckage or signals were found. And while the official investigation suggested mechanical failure or catastrophic issues as the likely cause, many believe otherwise. And so, to this day, the mystery of this incident remains just like all the unsolved ones in this video.